there we go. Those are the last pieces I needed uh, cut out for that parallel four link. Uh, well, no, never mind. Radius arm kit. This is going uh, to somebody. I made him a little weld them myself kit for uh, a 78 F-150 that he's uh, putting some Raptor shocks and Raptor front struts on and going to do a radius arm setup. So using uh, pretty much the brackets for the parallel four link Bronco that I'm building just made a, a single mount for the frame mount instead of a dual for a radius arm versus a parallel four link and uh, got the last gussets here. I need to now take these and uh, go sand them and clean them up out in the other shop and uh, get those holes dimpled and then get all of uh, these holes drilled out with a drill bit. So I cut all my holes about 10, 15 thou undersized with the plasma and then uh, drill them out with a hole. Um, just so that way they're perfectly round. I don't trust the plasma to do that. This is a Harbor Freight plasma that I use, just a Chicago Electric 40 amp. So it's not the biggest machine, but it does the job for what I do and the amount of uh, cutting I do. So. I've got it set up with this Kaiser uh, refrigerated air dryer and then a couple other little uh, filters for hopefully trying to get the air out. Uh, my other biggest problem with my setup though is uh, I have a really small compressor. I just have like a 110, I don't even know how many gallons this is, whatever that is. Yeah, I don't know, I don't see it. 25 gallon. So a 25 gallon compressor, it doesn't really hold the CFM I need to like nest out a huge plate and cut it off. So that's why I always just cut, I pull one part in at a time and always make sure my pressure's all the way up and full, the tank's full when I start a cut. Just, just to make sure I've tried nesting stuff and I don't have the air capacity to cut a bunch of stuff. So that's kind of uh, my plasma table set up. So I kind of have all my stuff spread out everywhere. This is in my garage attached to my house. And then I work out of my other garage over there. And then I got my, all my personal stuff, you know, kind of tucked away in that one. But it's nice having the space. And when the weather's nice, you can walk in between them. So yeah, I got a few more things loaded up. I need to uh, get cut out for the Bronco. needing to get this thing out for uh to wash it one more time before i uh tear into it for the year there we go. garage door stop there we go hold my door open so yeah i gotta get this thing out i'm gonna give it a wash try to get some of this dirt off uh some of the stuff some of the shocks mainly the rear I'm gonna try to get uh, ring and pinion tore out of there in the next couple days. So I'm gonna pull this thing out of the garage and wash it up, flip it around. I only got that one light in here, so. Let's see here. It's been, it's been a little while since it uh, started. So I started it like once this winter. later.
And I got a nice uh, day to pull this thing uh, out and wash it the other day, so. Still is uh, super dirty, but somewhat better. Got a lot more of the mud off. And now, I'm gonna start working on getting uh, the third member out. The ring and pinion in there is junk. I don't know if, uh, yeah, you can't really see. The thing was clanking pretty bad last time I drove it in like September, so. I gotta pull that out. Uh, that's gonna be pretty destroyed, I'm sure. Um, I've already found that I'm gonna have to put some new studs on. If you can see that, all my studs, these lug nuts were all hard coming off. They were, all the lug nuts are stripped. So I'm gonna have to put, uh, get some new studs for the, that actually. The other side was fine. I'll probably get new studs for that side too. So I've broken a set on that side before I've sheared them all off, so. Uh, it's one of those things, I guess, I guess uh, probably every two years I replace the studs because I haven't made it more than two seasons on the same set of studs. So luckily, uh, I guess we caught that before these ones sheared off. So get that ripped apart. And that's kind of what I'm doing is uh, going through this uh, rear end. I, I think the brakes are all fine. They're pretty rusty from sitting all winter, but um, just going to get the third member pulled out of there and get some parts ordered and hopefully show up next week, get this thing together. That's really my only hold up for getting in the dunes is uh, getting that third member fixed. So gonna set up a time lapse and get this thing pulled out and see how bad the ring and pinion look. the uh, third member out got the ring and pinion the bearing housing whatever the pinion housing got that off and this is what uh, my pinion is looking like yeah so I went uh, like last September on like an 80 mile trail ride and it already was like clunking when I left and I made it home, still driving this thing, but the uh, the uh, yoke, here you could grab the yoke of the drive shaft and flop it all around. So finally getting around to uh, pulling this out, diagnosing the damage. So I'm gonna get a ring and pinion ordered up, get some uh, new bearings. Those ones are a little trashed and get those set up. So that probably won't come until next week, but uh, yeah, I gotta get those studs ordered so I can replace the studs in uh, my axles and get some parts ordered for that thing. So, uh, about a week and a half till the dunes open, so shouldn't be too bad as long as I can get the uh, ring and pinion I'm looking for. That's all.
So, I do believe I know what this is. It should be something for my blue truck, which, I mean, obviously, the only thing I've done to my blue truck is pull out the uh, third member. But I should have all the parts now to, um, oh, wow, that didn't work at all. Oh, they stapled it. Damn. Okay. Hang on here. Oh, that's not working. All right, I'm back. I got it open. There was another box inside the box, but my ring of pinion showed up. And it's a little shiny. I decided to go with, I got a cryo, well, it's supposed to be. It's off eBay, so it's probably just polished, but it's supposed to be cryo heated or heat treated. Huh. I don't know, that looks used. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it works. I've been running uh, like, like motive gear or Richmond gear. I pretty much put a ring and pinion in my truck every season. Um, I've always wrecked them. I've tried a couple different gear ratios. Um, I started the truck out with 488. Um, and maybe I could go back to that, but uh, my engine was running a lot different when I was running that 488. So I just never really liked it with the 48 that I run, the uh, engine and the cam that I have in the thing. The uh, the 48 that I have made peak horsepower at like 5700 ish, 5800 RPM. So I run the thing. I try to keep the thing, and I actually even have a new converter maybe to try this year. I haven't put it in, but it's like a. 4200 stall converter i might try i've been running like a 3500 um just because like my first and second gear shift i'd like to get the rpm up a little higher for that shift but before i was going to try the converter um i needed a new ring of pinion obviously i showed you the other one that was a 567 ring and pinion um which i really liked where my turbo 400 and second gear was at um the problem the top I could only get second gear uh, doing about 75 mile an hour with the 567 gear. So I'm trying to get a higher mile per hour in my second gear because that's what I pretty much run in the dunes is second gear. Um, third gear in about one spot, I can use third gear. So um, third gear is over 100 mile an hour. So that's, you don't get to use that often in Silver Lake. Um but second gear, I went with a 529 to try. So I've ran 488, I've ran 567, I did a big jump. Now I'm gonna, I went down a little bit. And some of the reasoning is like the 567 pinion is a six, six, uh, I don't know what you call it, but six spline uh, pinion. Whereas 529, it is a little bigger and goes to a seven. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on there. That 567 in the other garage that I just pulled out of my truck, that's all chewed up, is a, it's got six blinds and it's a little smaller diameter. So we'll see how this one goes this year. Um, it really wasn't too crazy much more money that I spent on this for compared to like the Richmond's or the motives, you know, like the $200 or less like ring and pinions. Um, I think this was like 200 bucks on eBay. So I'm a, I like to be experimental with cheap parts. I don't mind replacing ring and pinions every year if they're cheap, but, uh, I'm hoping maybe this thing is actually cryo heated. And if it's not, it is at least definitely polished. So maybe that will, uh, help and go towards something. So